Hi, welcome to Devotion of Hope from Psalm 139. Uh, I was thinking this week and I just wanted to let you know, uh, man, I miss my Freedom Fellowship family. I miss those times of relational engagement we have and hopefully we can find creative ways to see each other uh, in the near future and I'm hoping and praying that things will open back up. Uh, just uh, on a side note, um, continue in your faithfulness. Continue to pray uh, for our ministry here. Continue to pray for the lost on a regular basis. Uh, seek God in his word. Uh, some of you, if you're spending a lot of time at home, you have a lot more time on your hands. And you can spend that time surfing Facebook or surfing God's word. And uh, there are a lot of different ways and things that can eat up our time. Take advantage of this opportunity you've been given. Use this as, as a blessing instead of viewing it as a curse. Uh, but this week, as I was thinking about how much I missed you and how much we probably miss each other and some of the things we do, I started thinking about uh, times in life when I've really wanted to see a familiar face. Um, I don't know about you, but when I walk into a room or go to a convention or uh, a lot of the different things we do where we get in big groups, the first thing I seem to do, and I don't know if it's programmed into us or if it's a me thing, but is I, I look for a familiar face, somebody that I know to gather with just to kind of break the ice and get used to being in the place that I am. And it's been that way my whole life. I think from the time we're young children, we're always looking for familiar faces, for the people that really know us. And today, from Psalm 139, we find out that the God that we worship, the, the one that we love, he is a God that knows us. And that is really, really exciting. But it's also a little bit scary because this God that knows us, there's nothing that's hidden from him. He really knows who we are at the very center of our very being. And sometimes that's a little bit scary for us because there's some stuff in there that we're still working on or there are some insecurities in there. And, but God knows us and he loves us just the way we are. So if you would, you can join with me. I'm going to read from Psalm 139 and I hope you enjoy this reading. This is Psalm 139, a Psalm of David. It says, you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know, when I sit and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful me for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go to, up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. You know full well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me are written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Where were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. If only you, God, would slay the wicked. Away from me, you who are bloodthirsty. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you, Lord, and abhor those who are in rebellion against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. And that's the word of the Lord, and it is a good word. We have a tendency to know, uh, at least the best we can, the people that are around us. If we spend time in reflection, we start to know ourselves. And a lot of the time, 
Uh, when we spend time around people, we begin to know their quirks. And sometimes people have quirks that irritate us. Uh, I've been told at numerous occasions that one of my quirks that have a tendency to irritate people or even my wife where she'll place my, her hand over my hand is that I click a pen sometimes when I'm talking or thinking. I don't know if you've ever been in a meeting uh, where someone's sitting there clicking a pen. Um, the more I'm thinking, the faster I click. And eventually I have to set it down or have it taken away from me. I also have a tendency to pick at my fingers when I'm watching a movie and my wife will be like, hey, stop that. I can hear you from over here. And so I throw my hands in the air and, uh, and just try to keep them there for a little while. Or even sometimes I sit on them to help me from fidgeting and having some weird things that she doesn't like. But people in generally are a little bit quirky. And there are some things about everybody that could have a tendency to um, bug us or irritate us. Uh, like, like when you're eating at the table and someone's talking with their mouth full and a piece of what they're chewing on lands in your bowl, it's a little bit irritating at times. And it doesn't mean we love them any less. It just means they have some quirks that sometimes um, kind of grate on our nerves. And, and that's, that's what we are as people. We have quirks and things that make us different and different ways that we were raised. And so there's some differences in us. And sometimes we don't like the things that are different from the way we do things. The interesting thing uh, one of the things I got out of the psalm is that, is that God knows us. There's a, a lot of things in there that say that God knows us, um, like really, really well. Uh, have you ever met one of those people that has the ability to finish your sentence? Have you ever been that close with somebody to where you're talking and their thoughts align with your thoughts a little bit and then they finish your sentence for you? Or sometimes really weird people that constantly finish each other's sentences for each other. If, you, if you're one of those, I'm sorry. I love you. God loves you. Um, just sometimes stuff like that happens. Uh, when we're around people, when we have a relationship with people, we become familiar with their patterns. And God, God knows our patterns. He knows us well enough to, most, to know what we're going to say before we say it, to know how we're going to react in situations. He's just a God that knows us. And it's really good to know that we are known by God. We can't hide the real us from God. Um, you can't hide anything from God. He, he knows who you are. He knows what you're up to. He probably even, I know he knows how we think. He just knows our patterns because um, we're in relationship with him. And he, and he knows us and he knows our quirks and those things that are hard and those things that we don't want people to know about us. And in spite of all those things, in spite of all those things, he still loves us. My wife uh, has a tendency to do this thing to me that drives me crazy. I'll be talking and she'll say, nevertheless, out loud. And it makes me stop immediately. And I'll start talking again and she'll go, nevertheless. And it makes me stop again. And then I'll start talking again and she'll go, nevertheless. And it makes me stop again. And it absolutely drives me crazy but I still love her. I still love her. God still loves us. God still wants relationship with us in spite of all of our quirks, all those things that make you unique and special, all those things that uh, you're like, oh my goodness, this is such a weird thing that I do. Like uh, maybe you have to turn the doorknob three times before you open it, or you just have some weird quirks. God knows all your quirks. He knows all your deficiencies, and he still loves you. Um, you cannot be weird enough for God not to love you. That's probably good news for a lot of us, right? I know it is for me. Um, one of the things that we have to do, that we have to do, if we're going to be in relationship with God, this God that knows us, this God that still loves us in spite of all of our quirks, is we have to be willing to open ourselves up to God. Um, sometimes we get a little bit prideful and we think, well, I'm going to hide these parts of myself. And we have a tendency to do that when we meet people, don't we? We put our best foot forward, um, usually in our first conversations. Uh, we present ourselves in a way that's maybe a little bit different than how we might present ourselves if we were sitting in the recliner in our living room. Um, that's true for us. We must open ourselves to God. We must open ourselves to God if we're to have a true and authentic relationship with him because he already knows us anyway. He knows every little 
thing about you and about me. And hopefully, hopefully, that's a relief to you because you don't have to hide anything from the God that knows you, that knew you when he knit you together in your mother's womb, that has known you every day of your life, that knows every mistake you've made and every good thing you've done, that knows the things that motivate you. This is a God that knows you. You don't have to hide anything from him. You can literally bear your heart to God. He already knows what is there. In the Psalm of David, David who is a man that is loved by God, a man that is known by God. In the Bible, it tells us that David, King David, it was a man after God's own heart. And he made a lot of mistakes, a lot of mistakes. But God knew his heart. And this is what David says. He says, search me, God, know my heart, Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Search me, God. Search me, God. Look inside me. See what's there. I, I want you to see it, Lord God. And then, then I want you to let me know what's in there that needs to change, that needs work. Those things that you want to fix and heal, Lord God. Those things that are just beautiful about me. Um, and it says he knows our anxious thoughts. And a lot of us have had a lot of anxious thoughts lately. Um, we're, maybe we're stuck at home. Maybe we're in the workplace a lot. Maybe we're worried about our loved ones. Maybe we're worried about the economy. Right now there's a lot of people and we have a lot of anxious thoughts and a lot of different motivations and a lot of different views of what is going on around us right now. God knows our anxious thoughts. Um, we want to make sure that our thoughts are in line with what God wants for us. And then he says, see if there's any offensive way in me. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way, of the way everlasting. We want, we want God to reveal to us those things that are in us that are not of him, that are of us, that are maybe contrary to what God wants for us. God wants good things for us. And sometimes there are things within us that keep us from the goodness that God has for us. And God's goodness is not always defined the way that we define it. Sometimes we define things that are good as in the right job, the right toys, uh, material things, the right relationship with the right person. Uh, we define things a little bit different than God does sometimes. We want to make sure that we look in our hearts and we allow God to search our hearts and reveal to us by the power of his Holy Spirit those things that are not of him so that we can offer those to him and allow him to lead us in that way of everlasting life. Life. Sometimes in our relationship with God, we have to be willing to say, God, is there anything I am doing in my life that offends you? Sometimes in our regular relationships, we have to be able to ask that same question. Sometimes you'll be surprised if you open yourself up and allow someone to speak into your life uh, you'll usually find opportunities for growth, even if you're not looking for them. So let's pray about this together today. And hopefully, hopefully you'll be able to be led by God. And he'll point out some of those things in your heart that he would like to work on to lead you to the places, the good places that he has for you. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for being a God that knows us. Thank you for being a God that has been with us every step of the way. Your presence does not leave us. There is nowhere we can go to flee from your presence. Uh, even if we're in the dark, Lord God, to you, it's as though it is light and you still see us. God, we want to allow you to speak to us. God, we just pray that today as we come before you, Lord God, that you would test us, that you would know our heart, that you would know our anxious thoughts, Lord God. And Lord, if there's anything offensive in our ways, in our doing, in our hearts, in our thoughts, Lord God, that is not in line with the things that you have for us, God, we pray, we pray that you would reveal those to us, that by the power of your Holy Spirit, that you would give us the strength to repent of those things and that we would be able to walk in that way of everlasting life enjoying the goodness that you have for us, Lord God, enjoying the blessing of knowing a God that knows us. 
Lord, today just reveal yourself to us once again, Lord. Right now, as we finish this message, we pray that right now, Lord God, that you would reach out, that you would touch our hearts, that you would speak to us, allow us to move into a place of openness with you, a place of connection with you, Lord God, and that you would empower us, empower us, Lord God, for repentance and the good things you have for us. Lord, we love you and thank you for your goodness once again. Thank you for this Psalm 139. And just that revelation that you are a God that knows us. There is nothing that is hidden from you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Uh, this is another devotion of hope. I hope it encourages you and that you will spend time getting to know the God that knows you. Uh, have a good week. I love you. I miss your face.